<clears throat> okay, well, I'm pretty sure that the first question everybody is going to ask is to do a problem like one that would be on you know the open response. And what I tell what I say every time somebody asks me to do that is I will do think do one that I think is like the one that will be on the response. That doesn't mean that students will think it's like the one that's on the open response. So, you know, what I'm telling you in the in the study guide, <clears throat> what I'm promising you is that it will be a Newton second law problem that requires you to draw a free body diagram, resolve forces into X and Y components, and apply Newton's second law in both the X and Y directions. That is what the open response problem will definitely be. So anything that meets those requirements is like the one that will be on the exam as far as I'm concerned. Now, it might be a problem where somebody is throwing a rock, maybe it's shooting an arrow, maybe it's kicking a ball, maybe it's you know, a sign hanging down, maybe it's a flower pot hanging, Maybe it's a fire hose, you know, so so that you know, what I tell what I often tell people is don't worry about what the nouns are in the problem. Because whatever the noun is, you're going to apply the same problem solving steps. So don't get on there and, you know, if it's a fire hose problem, think, oh, no, I've never worked a fire hose problem before. Think, OK, well, I draw a free body diagram. And I apply Newton's second laws in the X and Y direction after I resolve the forces into the X and Y parts. And it doesn't matter whether it's a fire hose or a, a, a bug or what, I mean, it doesn't matter. So uh, if we're going to work a problem that is like the one on the open response, it doesn't really matter what nouns we use, we're going to apply Newton's second laws. So let me go to the notes page. Okay, so here is, let's see, let me, let me get the chat box open so I can see it. Okay, um, so uh, this is my uh, crude physics way of drawing a woman who is a mountain climber. And uh, she is climbing over the side of this cliff. She's anchored her rope, which I've drawn in red. She's anchored her rope to this hook at the top of the cliff. And that rope makes a 20 degree angle with uh, respect to the side of the cliff face. And then we have also her legs are, are there. And what I didn't, and so actually I want to draw her feet. So. Let's see, we'll put her feet over there too. No, this is not working. Okay, there we go. There's got her feet there. And <clears throat> her legs are making, let's say, let's say her legs are making a, uh, we're making an angle. And with the, with the side of the cliff face too, and let's say that one is a 40 degree angle. Okay. And let's say finally, uh, let's say that the coefficient of friction, uh, the, the static friction. between her shoes and the cliff face is 0 0.2. Now that's not much friction. Let's say she's got good mountain climbing shoes on, so it's full. And what we want to do is determine, let's see, on the mass of the lady, we need that. Okay, so mass of the lady is, uh, 65 kilograms. So what we want to do is determine uh, 
the force with uh, which she has to pull on the rope. So you know, if you if you show up on the, on the final one on this one, you're like, oh my goodness, I'm going to start. I've never worked on mountain climbing problem before. And you say, oh, oh what? Well, a diagram. Okay, so uh, and oh, by the way, I it looked like somebody was somebody else was speaking. I I don't have any audio. My audio is not working, so uh, you'll have to say whatever, whatever you want to say, you have to say in the chat box. <clears throat> okay, so anyway, it doesn't matter that we've never worked a mountain climber problem before. What matters is that we start all of them the same way, draw a free body diagram. So let's draw a free body diagram of the woman. So unfortunately, we don't have to draw. We don't have to draw it out. No, we don't have to draw a good picture or, or anything like that. We just you know, draw a circle or a square or whatever and that represents the woman. And we draw the free. We draw the forces on the woman that are acting on the woman. Okay, so we have. Uh, gravity straight down. So up here, we'll call that mg. Okay, then we have uh, the normal force of the lift face pushing up on the woman's legs, and that's at a 40 degree angle from the cliff face. So that's going to be up in this direction, okay, and we'll call that uh, call that F normal. So this is the normal force from the cliff face, and then we've got the tension from the rope that she's hanging on to. That's off this way. And I'll call that tension. Okay. Uh, all right. Um, we've got, we, we've done the first step. If you're following along on the, you know, on the, study guide or you know, what I've done in class is what are the four steps? Well, the first step is always draw a free body diagram. We did that. Second step is always resolve your forces into their X and Y parts. So we need an X axis and a Y axis. Well, since this is not a ramp or an inclined plane, then we can just uh, use regular vertical and horizontal Axes, so this will be X and here's Y. Okay. So it looks like MG has only a Y component. And if we want to say, uh, if we want to say up is positive, then MG would be negative. And then we're going to have, it's like FN is going to have an X and Y component, and T is going to have an X and Y component. Okay, so how are we going to find T? Let's do T first. So the Y component of T is actually, yeah, is that up here? I'm going to use an arrow. Since this is a vector, so I should use an arrow, not a line. So there is Tx or Ty, I mean, and then Tx would be 
dx will be that. Now, we don't know, we don't know this angle right here, where my little, my little red thing is. That's not what's given. What's given is the angle with the vertical thing. So we know this angle. That angle is 20. Okay, so if we know the angle with the vertical, then the y component is going to be adjacent to that angle, so we use cosine. Let's say then that t y equals t times cosine of the 20 degrees. And I'll just, I'll go ahead and plug the 20 degrees in. I'll just go ahead and turn that into a number. So, uh, cosine of 20 is 0.94. Okay, so ty is equal to 0 0.94 times the total tension. The x is going to be t times sine of 20. Okay, we've done T into X and Y components. Now let's do normal force. Okay. And I don't need to indicate X and Y components of that. So the Y component of the normal force would be that. And then the X component of the normal force is that. And we know the angle that the normal force is making with the cliff face. That is this angle. That is the 40 degree angle. So uh, once again, or no, this time, uh, yeah, I think. So this time it looks like X is opposite and Y is adjacent. So we've got X is cosine, I mean, X is sine and Y is cosine again. So let's see, I'm going to go over. I don't know if that was scroll up. He's not cooperating. There we go. <clears throat> okay. So the normal force the ah, come on. <laughs> First, I couldn't get it to drag, and now I won't stop dragging. I don't want it to drag, I want it to draw. Okay, now I have that the uh, X component of the woman's leg force. No, I said, I said F in, but it's actually F leg. The X component <clears throat> of the woman's leg force since the x component is opposite, that's going to be the leg force times sine of 40. And the y component of the leg force is equal to f leg times the cosine of 40. So then plug those in. 
This one forty point seven seven point seven seven times the total leg force. And there was well, that's cosine forty. Doing sine forty point six four. So actually it's Oh, I want to. Well, okay. <laughs> uh, there we go. Oh. If it would just be consistent, I wouldn't have a problem, but sometimes it does one thing and sometimes it does another. When I. Okay, so anyway, that sh so the point seven seven goes with the with the y, the y, and then x. And I really, really should be able to do this. Nope, I won't let you do that now. Okay. Uh, well, the point seven seven actually. So, I, so I don't confuse people. Confuse. Mark that out and write it down here. Because that's for cosine. And then for sine, it's point six four. So this is equal to point six four FL. Okay. So we have now resolved all of our forces into x and y components. We're done with step two the problem problem solving procedure. Step three is to apply Newton's second law in either the x and or the y directions. And if you don't know which to pick first, it, it doesn't really matter because they're both valid. Sometimes it doesn't matter which one you pick first. Sometimes you can pick one and it works by itself. Sometimes you pick one and you get stuck, so you just say, okay, I'm going to pick the other one and see if I get unstuck. So, and, and I, I'll go ahead and tell you that for, for the one on the exam, you're going to have to use both. So, it doesn't matter which one you do first. You do first, you're going to have to use both X and Y anyway. So, I guess we'll do X first. And say, okay, well, the, the second law in the x direction is the sum of the forces in the x direction is equal to the mass of the lady times her acceleration in the x direction. Okay, so now on the left of that equation, I add up all of the x components that are in my three body diagram. So I have in the positive x direction, I've got the x direction of the leg force and in the negative x direction I have the x component of the tension. That is equal to the mass of the lady which is 65 times the, the lady's acceleration in the x direction which is zero because she is just hanging there. So that tells us that the x component of the leg force has to equal the x component of the tension. Well, that's sort of helpful, I suppose, except we don't know either one of them. So uh, once we can find one of them, I suppose that would help. And, and, and actually, it, it, it also tells us, since we know that x component of the leg force is uh, 0.64 FL, so we know that point, whoops, we know that 0.64 FL, 0.64 times the leg force, and then the x component of the y component force was 0.34, so 0.64 FL equals 0.34 T. Okay, and I'm sure somebody will interrupt me and, and just you know, let me know in the chat box if you're not following. So far, I haven't 
Excuse me, you didn't use that box. Okay, so, uh, well, that, that was helpful, but we're not done. We need another equation. Let's use the y. So we would say the sum of the forces in the y direction is equal to the mass of the lady times the acceleration in the y direction. So on the left, all of the forces that have a y component. Well, in the positive y, we have the y component of her legs plus the y component of the tension. And then the negative y, we've got mv. That's equal to zero because she's not accelerating in the y direction. Acceleration in the y direction is zero. So then we say okay, F L1, that's 0.77 F L, and then F and then T Y, T Y is 0.94 T. And then let's add M G to both sides. That's equal to M G. M is 65. What I said. I think I said 65, but it's going to be yeah, 65. Okay. 65 and G is 9.8. So 65 times 8. Six hundred and thirty-seven. That's six seven. Okay. So now what we do is we solve one of the. We've got two equations now. One, one here, one here. You know the x one and the y one, and two unknowns. So from here it's algebra. If you get this far on the exam, you're going to get almost full credit because I'm not, I mean, algebra is one of the prereqs for the class, but I'm much more interested in checking to see if you understand the physics than I am checking to see if you're good at algebra. So if you get this far and you get stuck on the algebra, I'll take off like one or two points out of 30. Right. So, you know, the, 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 Getting to this point is the main thing. But you know, if you want to get all the way, then we solve one of these for the other. So let's see what let's solve the I'm gonna solve the x equation one over on the right. I'm gonna solve that for FL. So I've got FL equals point three four over 0.64 times t. So 0.34 over 0.64. That's 0.53. So f l equals 0 0.53 t. And then I plug that in over here in the y equation. So then I have point, point, point seven seven times FL, but that's point five point five three. T plus 0.94 T equals 637. So 0.77 times 0.53 is 0.409. You see that's point. 0.409t, add that to 0.94t, plus 0.94, this is 1.35t, 
So finally, I have 1.35t equals 637. 4t is equal to 637 over 1.35. And that's 472, essentially. Okay, so 472 movies. Okay, so that's the tension in the rope. And that's how hard she has to hold on, because if she's holding on with that force, I mean, if the rope is pulling on her with that force, that's the force with which she is pulling on the rope. Now, I will have you do the common sense check, and it's probably going to be a situation like this where you don't have any everyday experience with it, and you especially don't have any everyday experience with it in terms of Newtons. But what you can do, and that doesn't mean you can't do the common sense test, you don't have to have done it to do the common sense test. What you can do is, if it's a force that you're finding, compare it to the weight of whatever it is in the problem. Well, this is one. Her mass is 65 kilograms. Her weight is mg. Her weight is 65 times 9.8. 65 times 9.8, we found was 637. Okay, so the woman's weight, woman's weight, we found earlier, be 637. So 472, uh, it looks like about two thirds of her weight. Up here and look at the picture. Well, she's holding part of herself up with her legs, so she shouldn't have to hold all of herself up with her arms, only most of it. So, yeah, I think I think two thirds of her weight sounds about right. I bet it least passes the common sense test. So, you know, don't feel like you have to have everyday experience with this thing in order to know if it passes the common sense test. If it's a force compare it to the weight of the thing or things in the problem. If it's an acceleration, compare it to gravity. I mean, this woman's not accelerating, so there's no acceleration to find. But if there is an acceleration, you know, you don't know how, you know, if it's a dog running across the yard, you don't know the acceleration in meters per second that the dog should have. But you know that it should be way less than 9.8, because dogs can't run as fast as they could fall off the cliff, so uh, or not change speeds as quickly anyway. Okay, so that is another problem that uh, where you do have to do all of the, the same steps that you will have to do tomorrow, as I have said, it will, or not tomorrow, but Thursday, it will not be the exact same details, but it will be the same steps that you have to do. Okay. Uh, so, I'm guessing also people want to do, um, people want to do concepts. Is there anybody who has a question other than let's do some concept stuff? Okay. Not getting anything. Anyone? So let's do some concept stuff. Um, so if you came to my office, I did some of these already with you. If you, I don't know if we'll do. We won't do them all. Oh uh, well. Um, working another problem, I'm probably not going to get to tonight. Person who's, who's uh, uh, texting or chatting me that I will do a problem with you in my office or 
or actually during my lab time tomorrow, I'm in lab from one to three. You can come find me in lab and I mean, you know how much I have to do when I'm in lab. Most of the time it's every 10 minutes somebody has a question and that's it. So I'll help you in there. Uh, or uh, I'll, uh, I can also, I may be in my office some in the morning. But uh, you all are welcome to attempt to find me in lab and come. Uh, let me help you if you have further questions tomorrow. I don't think we'll have time to work another problem tonight, okay? Okay, uh, <clears throat> let's see. What am I doing? Oh, yeah, the, the conceptual stuff. Okay, so uh, we'll do a few from each chapter. I'll do a few from chapter four and a few from chapter seven. All right, so there is vision Newton's first law problem, the conceptual thing. I'll give you a few seconds to think about it, and then we'll talk about the answer. Okay, well, in this one, this is the first law problem, which says that an object will remain at rest if there's no net force on it. So that means there's no net force on the book. Well, it doesn't mean that there's no forces at all acting on it, because gravity is still pulling it down, and the table is still pushing it up. So there are forces on it, but they cancel each other out, and there's no net force. Let's see, I need to open my chat box back. Oh, my lab time. Okay, uh, the the lab time is, tomorrow is from one to three. I also have lab from four to a, about six. That's an upper level lab. They may need less help than other people. They may need more help than other. It just depends on the experiment and how they're doing. <laughs> so. Uh, but anyway, one, one to three for sure, four to six and eight. Okay. Um, uh, so the the book, yeah. So anyway, there's yeah, there's no net force. In okay. Right, well, the, the key phrase in this one is actually highlighted. It's constant velocity. I was telling the people that were in my office this morning, constant velocity is one of those code words that, you know, you should, you know, you're, and you should have a little light that comes on when you see constant velocity in a conceptual question. Because constant velocity, by definition, means the acceleration is zero. And if the acceleration is zero, that means that the net force is zero. Just make sure that constant, that it really does say constant velocity. If it says constant speed, that's not good enough because speed is a scalar, velocity is a vector. If it says constant speed, and it also has to be in the same direction the whole time. If it says constant velocity, you know that it's the same direction the whole time. 
So that's one of those things. If, it's, if you see constant velocity, say, ah, oh, zero acceleration, no net force. Okay. I'm going to stop those. Let's do this one. Okay, well, if the tail is horizontal and frictionless, when you stop pushing it, what are the different horizontal forces on the cart? There aren't any. They're not pushing it anymore, and there's no friction. There's not anything else that could be exerting a horizontal force. So there are no horizontal forces on the cart after you quit pushing. Newton's first law says if there's no net force and there's no acceleration, that means it'll keep right on going with constant velocity. Okay, in class we talked about two people attracting each other gravitationally. Well, bowling ball and ping pong ball also attract each other gravitationally, not with a very large force, of course, but they do attract each other gravitationally. Question is, how do the forces compare? Well, this is Newton's third law. If the bowling ball exerts a force on the ping pong ball, then by Newton's third law, the ping pong ball exerts an equal but opposite force on the bowling ball. So they are equal. There will be something like this on the exam where some small thing and some little thing and it will ask you how the forces compare. Okay, that's enough uh, from this chapter. Just a moment, I'm going to. Get off this PowerPoint and uh, sign I'm going to find the, uh, the ones for the circular motion. We'll do a, we'll do a couple of those, and then that will be it. Okay, this is what I want. So, mm -hmm. 
go here and share our phones again. And here is to remember, well, if something is going around in a circle, which this ball is going around in a circle, then the net force has to point toward the center of the circle. Okay, so which one of those choices is toward the center of the circle? Not number one, not number two, oh, but number three. The horizontal component of the tension that would point toward the center of the circle. Four and five, they don't point toward the center of the circle. Only number three points toward the center of the circle. So that's the answer. Okay, now let's we'll see. Any more on this one that I want to do? Yeah, this is good. I don't know, that one's not good because that's what you feel like is happening. I want to know what really is happening. Know what you, what, I don't even know what you feel. I'm going to talk about how you feel when that's a different class. <laughs> Okay, well, again, we're going the car's turning left. And the field is pushed into the passenger door. But that is because so so in other words, you you are pushing right on the passenger door. That means that the passenger door is pushing left on you. So that one is two. I mean, there, there are two ways to think of it. One is since you're pushing to the right on the door, the door has to be pushing to the left on you according to the Newton's third law. The other thing is like, okay, well, I mean, you would naturally continue to go in a straight line. If nothing, if there wasn't any force on you, you'd keep going straight. But instead of going straight, you're going left. Well, if you would have gone straight, but instead of going left, something must be pushing you left. And it's the door that's pushing you left. All right, I think that is a good place to quit. Does anybody have any? Specific question about anything we've done or about the test. Um, problem with radians, uh, converting radians to RPMs or something. I, no, I'm not going to do that tonight either. It's it's getting late for me. I know it's not really late, but uh, I I don't want to work another problem. But I'll you know, I'll, I'll have to do that tomorrow if you can find me. Tomorrow. Okay, well, I think I will stop as soon as I stop recording, then, or as soon as I close the window, it will.
uh, it will 